every costumer needs a video about undergarments and here is mine we're talking about kimono underwear in history and common kimono underwear today in case you're here for the first time my name is billy matsunaga and i'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist when we talk about kimono undergarments we also have to take a look on the history because that history had a huge impact on today's kimono. So let's start in Heian period. The Heian era is known to mark out the birth of today's kimono. It was a time when the Japanese emperor cut off all the strings to China to establish a Japanese culture. And it was the first time that Japan took its own steps in garment history. Well, we will still have to keep in mind that Chinese court gowns were the start line for everything that evolved from that. Anyway, stepping away from Chinese culture ended in gowns that were known as Soktai and Junichtoi. And I have a video going into detail about those two linked down below. But today's video is going to focus on the undergarment of those. The undergarment of those gowns is called Kosode. Kosode was made first of plain white silk and was worn directly on skin. The word kosode means literally translated small sleeve and that refers to the small sleeve opening as well as the relatively short sleeves itself. It's a garment that evolved during another period among the common people to save fabric by making the sleeves shorter and the garment itself warmer by making the sleeve opening smaller. And originally it also didn't have kimono sleeves, they were actually brown sleeves. There aren't many records left about kosode in the Heian period literature, but we do know it was first worn by noblemen as an undergarment and towards the end of the Heian era it was also part of the female wardrobe as well. In the Kamakura period, kosode became a garment that was worn as a top layer. That had several reasons. One of those was that after the samurai took over to rule over Japan, the other garments had to become a little more convenient. And as kosode were already worn as an outer layer by the common population since the end of the Heian era, it only made sense to also introduce this garment into the wardrobe of the upper class. But especially in the eras after that where war was chasing after war, there were no financial resources to put into clothing. In the 17th century, when peace was brought back, kosode became to be very heavily decorated garment with embroidery and dye. So the garment that functioned as an undergarment for aristocrats in history actually evolved into an outer layer that was worn by any class, no matter which gender you are. And that is today's kimono. So when kosode wasn't an undergarment anymore, what was actually worn under that? Unfortunately, we do not know a lot about the undergarments up to the 17th century. But we do know a lot about the undergarments of the following era, the Edo period. And we have to conclude that most of those undergarments were probably also worn beyond the Edo period. Let's take a look at those undergarments from bottom to top. Men actually had underpants and those are called fundoshi. In Edo period, we know that there were three types of fundoshi. Rokushaku fundoshi, echu fundoshi, and moko fundoshi. The latter were worn by kabuki actors that are specialized in female roles, so-called onagata. Rokushaku fundoshi and echu fundoshi are basically just a rectangle, a very long rectangle that was folded up and tied up at the waist. In my research, I found really interesting that for the higher classes, fundoshi were actually made of white silk, while for the common population, fundoshi were made of cotton. Women wore something that was called kyafu, or also yumoji. And when you do research, there will be so much more names coming up for this. It was basically an underskirt. It was a really short skirt that was made of hemp. And it was also worn when going into the top of a public bath. 
And that's where the name Yumoji actually comes from because Yu means warm water. It was a wrapped mini skirt that became longer and later also hit the knees. Over that, women wore a susoyoke. Susoyoke is a long wrapped skirt that was made of silk. It was meant to save the upper layers from any damage or dirt made by the feet hitting against the upper layers when walking. It was invented in the 19th century and by the way, um, Susoyoke was the name in the area of today's Osaka or Kyoto in Edo, which is today's Tokyo, it was called Kedashi. On top of that, the juban was worn. Juban, by the way, is a word that is originated in Portuguese. I can speak Portuguese, so I will just put the word on screen. But I love this word as an example to show how international kimono as a garment actually is. Juban were worn by men and women and in history it was only a half length shirt which means it only would cover the top of the body and today we refer to this as hanjuban. It had big sleeve openings what you still see and it was a garment where the han eri was sewed on. For the upper class this was of course again made of silk and the lower class had this made of cotton. In the years of Genroku, the Nagajuban was invented, but it took it over a century to be finally a necessary part of the female wardrobe. A difference to today's Nagajuban is that the collar was actually so long that it reached the hem. By the years of Bunka, Nagajuban were part of a formal kimono outfit for women of the middle class. As Nagajuban evolved, women started to wear a cotton layer under that, that had round sleeves. Round sleeves in Japanese are called tsutsusode, and this is where this undergarment took its name from, it's called tsutsupo. This was also worn by men, sometimes instead of their hanjuban, sometimes layering up with the hanjuban. And this is what I think was actually the birth of today's hadagi or hadajuban. During the cold seasons, a dogi was worn over the juban. Dogi is again a half length garment, so it only covers up the top of your body that was padded. Padded means there was a padding between the outer layer and the lining. Upper classes again had this made of silk and lower classes had it made of cotton. There were lots of different shapes for dogi out there. They had sometimes kimono sleeves, sometimes they had round sleeves, and sometimes they had no sleeves at all. And the last layer of undergarment that was worn on top of that is not actually an undergarment. It's called shitagi, or you will also find the name shitagasane for it. Shitagasane was a layer that was worn over the undergarments, but under the kosode. And usually this one had the same formality as the kosode. So if the kosode was padded, the shitakasane had to be padded as well. If the kosode was just lined, an awase, the shitakasane had to be an awase as well. And in summer, shitakasane usually was just white, plain cotton. In general, I can say that kimono undergarments did not really change throughout history until today. But today's undergarments are a little better categorized, way less, and genderless. So the first layer you usually would wear over your skin, besides your underpants, would be the hadagi or hadajuban. That could be a two-piece hadajuban or a one-piece hadajuban. Two-piece hadajuban consists of a top shirt that has brown sleeves is made of cotton and a wrapped skirt that is called susoyoke today on the bottom and you could replace the susoyoke with a um, trousers shaped undergarment um, it doesn't really matter which one you wear today you can wear both on top of that you can wear padding wear but it's not necessary and over that you would wear your juban. It can be a two-piece juban that consists of a hanjuban and a susoyoke, but you can also wear a nagajuban. And while nagajuban was only part of a female wardrobe 
for such a long time, today it is a very, very common male undergarment as well. And over that you wear your kimono, because Stakasane is only part of a very formal wardrobe today. For example, the white Stakasane of a Kurutome Sode. When you would put on a Kurutome Sode, you would have to put on a white undergarment over your Nagajupan, the Stakasane, and over that you would put on the Kurutome Sode. But today's kimono are so simplified that the Stakasane barely isn't a garment for itself anymore. Today, just pieces of white fabric are sewn to the bottom hem, the collar and the sleeve openings to show that you would wear a Stakasane, but you actually don't. And this way of making a kimono is called hiyoku. So today's kimono was actually an undergarment and became an outer layer. And while that happened, a lot of more undergarments were actually invented under the kimono. And later on, those undergarments were cut out of the wardrobe because you don't need it anymore. I find this history extremely interesting and I hope you found it too. If you have more questions, feel free to comment down below. I will try as good as I can to answer you. You can also message me on Instagram. If you want to learn more from a professional kimono teacher, make sure to stick around and subscribe to my channel. Share, link, like, comment under this video because this will really help me out a bunch and I talk to you in my next video. Bye!